Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to today's online Sunday school. It is so good to be here with all of our Riverbank kids and our Riverbank families as we celebrate Easter Sunday. Who is excited for Easter Sunday? I know I am. It is my favorite holiday. I just love Easter. I love everything about Easter. I love the springtime. I love the candy. I love the egg hunts. I love the Easter bunny. It's just one of my favorite times of year. And I know for a lot of you, it's one of your favorite times of the year too. And you know, it's really easy for us to get excited about Easter Sunday because we know what happened on that first Easter Sunday. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you real soon. But if you do, you know that it's something we celebrate. We celebrate the fact that Jesus didn't stay dead. And that's today's takeaway, is that Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. He rose. That's our big surprise, is that Jesus did something that not everybody can do. This is a miracle, that he rose from the dead, and he was able to do that because he's Lord. Jesus is Lord. But when we think back to that first Easter, that was a surprise what he did, right? We know that it happened. And so we don't really get surprised when we hear the story anymore. But those first people who saw him after he rose, they were surprised. They were shocked because that's something that doesn't just happen. And Jesus had tried to tell them, guys, I'm going to die. I have to do this, but I'm going to come back. Would that have been hard for you to believe if you were walking with Jesus during this time and he told you, hey, I'm going to have to go to the cross. I'm going to have to die, but I'm going to come back. Would that have been hard for you to understand? You probably hadn't seen that happen before, right? So these people didn't know what was going to happen. They knew what Jesus said, but they didn't always believe that he was going to come back. And so Easter was this amazing, big surprise awesome fun day when they saw that Jesus had come back, that he did what he said he did, would do, because he is God. Jesus was able to pull off one of the biggest surprises, if not the biggest surprise in all of history. He was able to come back after he died on the cross. We know that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us from our sins. We have all in the bad things we've done, in the sins we've committed, kind of just earned up a price that we had to pay, right? We had to make our wrongs right, but we couldn't do it on our own. And so Jesus was willing to follow the Father's plan and go to the cross and die for our sins. He loves us so much that he wasn't going to leave us. That was not the end of Jesus's role in our lives. That was just the beginning, right? That's what gave us access to him. That's what gave us access to the father. We learned last week that when Jesus died on the cross, the temple curtain ripped in two. And that means that we were now able to go directly to the father. There was nothing separating us. That curtain between us was gone. Jesus did that when he died on the cross. So again, today's takeaway that I want you to say with me is that Jesus died, but he didn't stay dead. And we're going to learn a little bit about what happened right after the cross and how amazing this big surprise is. So go ahead and get out those Easter toasts that we used last week during Palm Sunday. You're going to need them again today. And we're going to use the last of those items during our sections today as we learn about this amazing surprise. So I think we are ready to begin the big surprise week two. All right, friends, you know how we like to kick off Sunday school. We have to play another game, right? We have another fun Easter game this week to play together. Last week, if you remember, we decided if some Easter favorites were good, or bad, and then some everyday items, some different things like coffee and ketchup and video games. And we had a lot of fun deciding if those things were good, not so good, or maybe we were just kind of indifferent about them. We are gonna play a different game this week and we are gonna keep making choices, but it's not necessarily a good or a bad choice, it's a would you rather choice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up on the screen two different real things that happened in the Bible. And these are amazing, crazy, surprising things, kind of like Jesus's resurrection. 
And I want you to decide which one you would have rather seen with your own eyes. And there are so many things in the Bible that I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have seen and witnessed this for myself. But I'm so thankful that whenever I feel like that, I can just open the Bible and I can just read these stories and it's kind of like I'm there. So let's get started with our first two options. All right, this first one is a tricky one. They're all tricky, but this one really for me is pretty hard. Would you have rather been at creation or Jesus's resurrection? So would you have rather been there with God as he created the world, the universe, space, here, water, sky, all of it in six days? Or would you rather have seen Jesus rise from the dead? I think I'm gonna say Jesus' resurrection. I think I am. I just love this story. I know what this story means to me. And so I think I would rather have seen that, but seeing creation would have been so cool. So which one would you choose? All right, our next one, would you have rather seen the parting of the Red Sea when Moses, through God's power, was able to split the Red Sea in half? Or would you rather have seen Jesus walk on water? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I think both of those would have been so cool to see. But I think I'm also going to say Jesus walking on water. What about you guys? Okay. Would you rather have seen, these are two miracles Jesus did, the blind man being able to see again, or a crippled man who couldn't walk, now being able to walk. We know that these are miracles Jesus performed. He was able to make a blind man see and he was able to make a crippled man walk. I don't know. I know I keep saying that, but these are so hard. I think I would say a blind man being able to see because I just think being able to see is such a gift. I mean, think of all the amazing things that God lets us see, all the colors, and all the amazing things he created and all the fun animals and all of our friends and just think about you know what that would look like our, our lives would look like if we weren't able to do that so i think while both of these were amazing awesome great miracles i think there just would have been something about somebody who had not been able to see now suddenly seeing everything with perfect vision i think that would be so awesome to witness all right let's do a couple more would you have rather been, so this is not just seeing, but this is, would you have rather been in the belly of the whale with Jonah or in the prison cell with Paul and Silas? This one's not so hard for me. I don't know about you guys. I would choose the prison cell. I would. I don't know. I just think Paul and Silas would have some really awesome stories to tell about the work they had been doing on the missionary field. Not that Jonah wouldn't have some crazy stories to tell, but also, I don't know, I think I'd rather be in a prison cell than in a fish. What about you guys? Where would you have rather been? All right, last one. Would you have rather been in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or the lion's den with Daniel? So, <laughs> about these options. These are both scary. These are dangerous places to be. These are some awesome people that we could be spending time with. But which one would you choose? I think I would choose, I think I would choose the fiery furnace. I really do. And I don't have a solid reason for that. I just feel like there's something about that story that draws me. And if I had to pick, I don't want to pick, but if I had to, I think I would pick the fiery furnace. What about you? Let me know. All right, friends, this has been a fun game. There's a lot more we could go through, but I wanna go ahead and get into the bulk of our lesson because it is a special story that we are learning about today. And it is a story that has so much meaning for us because if this story didn't happen, we wouldn't be who we are. We wouldn't have the relationship with God that we have. And once again, it is all about Jesus. And so let's get ready, let's prepare our hearts and our minds and learn about the big, awesome, greatest surprise that has ever happened, Jesus rising from the dead. Well, last week,
week on Palm Sunday, our story concluded with Jesus going to the cross to die for our sins. And Jesus didn't deserve this death. This was a type of death, going to the cross, being crucified on the cross, which is what we call what happened. That was a type of death that only the worst of the worst criminals deserved. And we know that Jesus was there in the middle of two criminals and those criminals on his sides deserved to be there, but Jesus didn't. But Jesus was willing to be there because he knew that was the Father's plan for all of us to have our sins forgiven, you and I. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? How crazy and amazing that is that on the cross, Jesus was thinking about us. He was thinking about all of God's children who had made mistakes, who couldn't repay what they owed, who couldn't make their wrongs right. So he was willing to hang there on the cross and he was willing to die for us so we could be free, so we could live. He died so we could live, right? But even though that's where our story ended last week, that's not where the whole story ends. Things happened after the cross. So we're gonna get right into our story today, talking about where Jesus went after he was killed on the cross. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to the book of Matthew, and we're gonna be in Matthew 27, verses 57 through 66. So Matthew 27, 57. Let me read this for you. As evening approached, Joseph, who had become a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus's body. And Pilate issued an order to release it to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a long sheet of clean linen cloth. He placed it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of rock. Then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. Both Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. The next day on the Sabbath, the leading priests and Pharisees went to see Pilate. They told him, sir, we remember that one, that deceiver once said while he was still alive, so they're talking about Jesus, he wasn't a deceiver, he didn't lie, but they are saying that he did and they said, one time while he was still alive, he said, after three days, I will rise from the dead. So we request that you seal the tomb until the third day. This will prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body and then telling everyone he was raised from the dead. If that happens, we'll be worse off than we were at first. Pilate replied, take guards and secure it the best you can. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. Wow. So after Jesus had died on the cross, one of his followers named Joseph came and asked Pilate, who was the governor, can I have Jesus's body? Can I treat it with the honor and the respect it deserves and give it a proper burial? So Pilate gave him the body, which that surprises me. But I know that that was part of God's plan. I know that it is part of God's plan that Joseph would have gotten Jesus's body and put him in the tomb because that tomb was where he was going to rise from the dead. So Joseph took Jesus's body and he, he treated it right. He treated it well. He wrapped it in clean cloth and he put it in this tomb. He put it in his own tomb. So, Jesus, or, so Joseph had this tomb for when he was going to pass away. He had prepared for that, but he thought, you know what? Jesus deserves this spot. I don't deserve to be here. Jesus deserves to be in this special tomb. And people were standing guard at the tomb. So we see that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb and watching. They might have still been in grief. They might have still been so sad to see their beloved Jesus die and be buried. But then some priests and some Pharisees were also watching, but they were watching for a different reason. They were watching because they wanted to catch the disciples in the act. They thought that the disciples were going to come to the tomb and take Jesus's body because they knew that Jesus had claimed that he was not going to stay in that tomb. That after three days, he was going to rise again and the tomb would be empty. So the Pharisees and the priests thought that the disciples, Jesus' followers, would come and get, grab the body and make it look like he had rose again. 
But that's not what Jesus was doing. Jesus wasn't just pulling off some illusion. He was pulling off something real. He wasn't just going to have his disciples hide his body and pretend like he rose. That would be deceitful. That would be dishonest. That would be a lie. And we know that Jesus is none of those things. He's not a liar. He was going to do what he said he was going to do. But these people wanted to prevent anything from happening that made Jesus look like an amazing person. So they went to Pilate and said, can we do something about this tomb? Can we make sure it is sealed that nobody can get in, nobody can get out? And Pilate said, do what you need to do. Seal it however you need to seal it. So that's what the guards did. Now, did that tomb stay sealed? It did not. It did not stay sealed. Jesus is stronger than any seal that these people tried to put up to keep him in that tomb. He was not about to stay in that tomb because he said he was going to rise from the dead. And if Jesus says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So I want us to think about that tomb. And I want us to think about the fact that the son of God was in a rock, right? It says that Joseph's tomb was carved out of a rock. He deserved this amazing, special, holy place for his body to rest. He deserved to rest in the temple, right? In this most holy place. But he laid in this rock. And that was very normal during this day that that's what dead bodies experienced where they went. But Jesus deserved something far more than just this. But it didn't matter where Jesus was going to lay for those three days because he wasn't going to stay there, right? That was not his permanent home. He was going to come back. But I want us to think about those tombs and think about what those might have looked like. Maybe you've seen some illustrations or drawings of what different tombs during this time could look like. But regardless, I want us to have a little fun with this. And so if you look in your Easter tote, you should have a little Easter egg of Play-Doh. And I have one. And I took it out, and can I show you the tomb I made? Because we're gonna make dough tombs. I want us to think about this tomb, what it looks like, and imagine if Jesus' body stayed in something like this. So you can see, here's my tomb. It's a teal color, because that's one of my favorite colors. If you've been in my office at church, you know that. This is kind of the color of one of my walls. But it's just carved into the side of rock. And there's this hole where Jesus' body would have been laying, and there was this stone that they rolled and they sealed in front and it was a heavy stone. It was a stone that not just everybody could move, not just any single person could come and move and take Jesus' body and say that he went somewhere, but it was a heavy stone to keep him locked in there. But we know that no stone, no seal, nothing that we in our humanness put against God is gonna stand. If God wants to do something, he's gonna do it. And he wanted his son to rise again. So I want you to spend some time crafting a little dough tomb and you can you can connect your stone to the tomb if you want but really I like it on the side because that reminds me that the tomb is empty that Jesus is not there anymore that he rose from the dead he did what he said he was going to do so go ahead and spend a few minutes making your dough tomb that we have all been waiting for, the big surprise that Jesus did not stay in that tomb. So we are gonna start talking about the resurrection. And when we say Jesus' resurrection, we mean that moment in time when he rose from the dead and when those tombs became empty, when our little dough tombs who are empty, the real tomb was now empty, just like our Play-Doh tombs. So let's just dive right into the Bible and see what God's word says about this amazing moment. So we're gonna pick up right where we left off. We're gonna be in Matthew 28 now, and we're gonna be in verses one through 10. And it says, early on Sunday morning, the first Easter Sunday, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. 
So these women were so faithful in visiting this tomb because they loved Jesus. They wanted to even just be near his body. And they were still processing what had happened on the cross and they just wanted to be near him. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, that super heavy stone that not everybody could roll on their own. An angel did it. And the angel sat on it, just sat on it. He was like, yep, I just did that. Now I'm just going to sit here. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he was risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. Oh, think about that moment. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Does that story give anybody else goosebumps? Think about what these women had to have been feeling. So first off, the guards, right? The guards, their one job was to watch this tomb and make sure nobody got out of it. But the crazy thing is, the stone did not need to roll away for Jesus to walk out of that tomb. Being God, having the Holy Spirit, Jesus was able to just walk out without the stone being moved. But once the stone was moved, the angel of the Lord came and moved that stone. The tomb was empty. Imagine the guards reaction. They had this one job to keep Jesus in this tomb. They had not left their position. They had watched that tomb so intently, but not close enough because Jesus was able to bypass that. He was able to go and be free and walk again. He wasn't bound to this tomb. There was nothing that could keep him in place when he knew he had somewhere else to go. And now these women, Mary Magdalene and the other woman, or the other Mary, who came to this tomb time and time again in these three days that Jesus was in it, they saw with their own eyes. These were the first people besides the guards to see that Jesus was not there. He was risen. And they had an awesome responsibility. They got to go tell everybody else. The disciples, Jesus' closest followers and friends, they got to go tell them that what Jesus said was going to happen came true. He was not there. And you know what? We have that same responsibility. We have that same calling on our life that we get to go tell everybody we know that Jesus rose from the dead. And why does that still matter today? Because that was just a moment in time. Why does it matter that we have to go tell people that? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, he did what he said he was going to do. And he proved that he was God, that he was son of God. He was who he said he was. So many people did not believe him during his earthly ministry. But this one moment in time was enough to prove that he is God, that he can do amazing things, that he is so much higher than us. He's not just a normal person saying that he's God. He is. And so we get to go tell other people, look what Jesus did. This is proof. This is evidence that he is good, that he loves us, that he has a plan for our good. So what I want us to do, if you look in your Easter tote, you have a rock. You have a really big rock. And the rocks are a bunch of different shapes, so yours might not look like this. This is kind of a funny looking potato rock. Um, but what I want you to do on this rock, you're gonna do a couple things for me. On one side, I want you to write Ephesians 1, 7 through 8, because that's our verse for these two lessons. That's our memory verse, Ephesians 1, 7 through 8. 
But then on the other side, I want you to take a marker, a Sharpie, whatever you have, and I want you to just draw across. I want you to draw across and I want you to remember that that stone that was rolled in front of the tomb was not strong enough to keep our Jesus, our Savior down. He is stronger than a rock. He is stronger than whatever trial you are going through. He can push through anything to accomplish his will. And his will, what he wants to do, his plan, is for our good. The Bible tells us that. Jesus' plan is for our good and for his glory. So when his plan is accomplished, we benefit, but he is praised. And that's exactly what happened on that first Easter morning. We benefited because our Savior came back from the dead, but we praise him because only he could do that. So spend some time working on your stones. We call these resurrection rocks. So this is your resurrection rock, and you can write our Bible verse, Ephesians 1, 7 through 8, and then a cross. And I just want you to put this somewhere where you're going to see it every single day. And remember what happened on that first Easter morning, even when it's not Easter, because we can celebrate what happened on Easter every day, because it matters every day. on to our final part of today's story. So Jesus is back. He rose from the dead and now he's going to go tell people. He's going to show himself to people. Let them see that he accomplished an amazing big surprise. So on his way to go see his disciples, he ran into a few people and he showed them that he was back, that he had rose from the dead. And so when he got to the disciples, the disciples had heard a rumor that he was back, but they probably struggled to imagine what that looked like, what that meant, what he mean Jesus is back. Jesus had told them, I'm going to come back, but we know that we don't see that happen every day, so that's hard for us to imagine. So let's read the story of what happened when Jesus himself walked face to face, straight up to the disciples and showed them that he had rose from the dead. So we're in the book of Luke now, and we are in chapter 24, and we're going to be in verses 35 through 48. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. So these two people that Jesus had seen on the road were now telling the disciples, about what they had seen, what they had witnessed. And as they are telling the story, there's Jesus. He pops up and says, peace be with you. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. So the disciples were so overwhelmed. They were just hearing this amazing story from these two people. And then suddenly Jesus is there and it's just like, what is going on? And so they thought that Jesus was a ghost. And we know this isn't the first time that happened. Do you remember the story of Jesus walking on water when the disciples in the boat saw Jesus walking towards him, towards them, and they were so startled and frightened that they thought he was a ghost then? So the disciples did this a few times, and it's so funny because they were the ones who were closest to Jesus, who saw Jesus the most here on earth during his ministry. And yet, sometimes they still even struggled to believe that he was as good and as amazing as he said he was. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. So Jesus, when he was crucified on the cross, he had nails put into his hands and to his feet to keep him up there, to keep him hanging there. And he still has those scars. And so he was proving to the disciples that he was actually Jesus. He said, look, look at my scars. They're there. I did die. I did come back. 
touch me and make sure I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies. And as you see, I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? <laughs> do you think Jesus was hungry after these three days in the tomb? He said, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it as they watched. So Jesus is just going about life as normal because he knew this was part of God's plan. He knew that all these things had to be accomplished and they were, and he was just going about it. He wasn't surprised that any of these things happened. So he was fine to just sit down and eat, but the disciples just stood there and watched him like, is Jesus really here right now? Is he really eating this fish we just gave him? Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms, all of those things must be fulfilled. So everything that the Old Testament says about Jesus, we know that Jesus is written about all the time in the Old Testament and all of those predictions about his death and about his resurrection, they had to be fulfilled and they were. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that in this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There's forgiveness of sins for all who repent. That's what he accomplished on the cross. You are witnesses of all of these things. What a story. Can you imagine being one of the disciples, hearing that Jesus had rose from the dead, not really understanding what that would have meant, where he was, what you were supposed to do, and then suddenly he's there and he's telling you all of these things. He's showing you the scars on his hands and on his feet. He's eating with you and he's saying, look at all of these things that were said about me. All of these hundreds and hundreds of years ago in the Old Testament, they're fulfilled. I did them, they're done now. And now there's forgiveness of sins, there's freedom in what I just did on the cross. That is what we celebrate on Easter Sunday, that this story is real, that these conversations that happened were real, and that now we get to experience that freedom that Jesus died for in our own lives today. Even though, like the game we played earlier, we weren't there to witness it. We weren't there to see it with our own eyes. That doesn't matter because it's still true. And the power that those events had still is had today in our own lives. So what I want you to do to conclude today's lesson, and I'm sorry I can't reach across the camera screen and give this to you, but I want you to eat a sweet treat. I want you to eat some candy, a cupcake, anything that you might find at a surprise party. If you've ever been to one, a birthday party or just a celebratory party, because we are celebrating today that Jesus died for us. He rose for us too. And that he was obedient to the Father's plan. God knew what had to be done for us. Again, God's will is for our good and for his glory. And Easter is for our good and for his glory because Jesus died for us. He rose to get glory, to show that he is the son of man, the son of God. And so I want you to have a treat today. I want you to celebrate today. I want you to live it up today, have fun, and remember how amazing it was that Jesus pulled off this big surprise, that he died, but he didn't stay dead. I hope you guys have the best Easter. Let me offer a little prayer for you as we go, and then I'll see you later. God. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for the reminder of what you did on the cross and the reminder that you didn't stay in that tomb, that the tomb is empty, that you are now in our hearts, that we now have free access to the Father because of you dying on the cross and that curtain ripping in two. Thank you that we get to celebrate what you did on that first Easter Sunday every single day of our lives and every single Easter Sunday now. God, I pray a blessing over all of my friends watching this and their families. I pray that you would go before them this week and every day of their lives, that they would feel your presence, know that you were with them, and know that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead 
is within them. They have the Holy Spirit with them and they are victorious because of Jesus' victory on the cross. It's in your name I pray.